So the next topic, the arc length function. What does it mean, the arc length function? So far, we know that the arc, le the arc length was a length. So we came up with a value. But if you think about um, the arc length in the following manner, uh, you have an initial point x equal a. Let's let's do y equal f of x. So you start with uh, with i y equal f of x, and you have the initial value uh, a. And but the final value, instead of being b, a fixed point, you want to know in general an expression for what happens if the final the end point is is a generic x. So uh, we're going to change the theorem, and we're going to say that. If we have an arc length function, let's call it s of x, then it will be instead of the integral from a to b, it will be the integral from a to a generic value x. Now, since I'm using x as the boundary, then I need to choose another variable of integration. Remember, the variable of integration is something that is fairly random. So I'm going to use f of t, and then I'll double it, uh, I'll square it, okay? So the variable of integration will be dt. So this is the, uh, the theorem for the uh, arc length is a function. And now, just a little bit of a digression here. If you recall ftc1, Remember, fundamental theorem of calculus has two parts, but the first part uh, is the one that um, combined the integral and the derivative. And FTC1 told you that if f is an integral, then df dx would be pretty much the integrand with substitu substituting the variable of integration with the upper boundary. So, in this case, if s is the function, then ds dx, the derivative of the integral, gives you back the integrand, and therefore we'll have the square root of 1 plus f prime, but now it will be f prime of x. That intermittent or variable of integration will be substituted with the upper boundary. Okay, and again, we need to square it. Like so. All right? Now, it also can be written as, uh, instead of the prime notation, it's as a 1 plus dy dx squared. Like so. I like this notation for a reason that will be clear in a minute. Uh, now, if I want to write this result in a differential form, and we'll do more of a differential form today. So the differential form will be the following. Uh, I want differential form, I'm interested in ds by itself. So ds by itself would be the square root of 1 plus dy dx squared, right? times dx. Okay, so we have differential on the left equal to differential on the right. Okay, now look here. If I want to include the dx inside the radicand, inside, I'm sorry, as part of the radicand, in other words, I want to include dx uh, as inside the radical. dx would be part of the radicand. So if we get it in, then dx becomes dx squared. Right? So we have now um, d 1 times dx squared. So we have dx squared. And then here we have dy squared, dy over dx squared times dx squared, or simply dy squared. And this is really interesting result. And if we simplify it a little bit more, and we square both sides, and we have the differential ds squared equals the sum of the two differential, dx squared and dy squared. 
like so. Now, look at this result, and it smells like what? Exactly right. And if you think about it, what, what does it mean, the S, the X, and the Y? Those are, those are differential. Those are infin infinitely small, infinitesimal quantities. Okay, remember, we take, it's delta that when we proved this theorem, we started with delta X and delta Y. But if we let delta to be so small, so we call it dx, then uh, what we are looking at at uh, mi inf inf infinitesimal form of the Pythagorean theorem. And to illustrate what we are looking, let's say here is a curve, okay, some kind of curve, uh, and we are looking at the arc length, let's say from x equals a to x equals b. So what we do, we're going to divide this arc into infinitely many small pieces. And if you build a little right triangle around that, then here you have dx and here you have dy. So what is the arc length? Well, the arc length will be L, in this case, will be the integral from A to B of dS. And that's indeed what we are doing. Okay? So that's the idea. Uh, and this is the differential approach to calculus. Uh, so instead of taking, breaking this down into delta and take the limit as n goes to infinity, you know, and use the limit of Riemann sum to come up with the integral, we can take the differential approach to say, okay, I have a little piece so small it goes, it's very close to zero, I call it the edge. It's still going to be the hypotenuse of a very, very small triangle. And that's what this uh, expression means. I'll follow this uh, uh, introduction by a quick example. 